Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well today we want to talk about Mortal Kombat again but this time we want to talk about the history of Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy. So many people didn't see the point. So many people when they first heard way back in 1992-93 that the giant that was Mortal Kombat was going to make it onto portable home systems such as the Game Boy and Game Gear laughed their heads off because they thought how on earth is the Game Boy, the, the tool of Tetris going to handle something as advanced as advanced as Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Not only did they succeed, but on top of that, they flourished to go on to make four Mortal Kombat games on the standard Game Boy device. We're going to cheat a bit. Number four was a Game Boy Color. Nevertheless, today we're looking at Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3 and 4. So straight away, here is the pit level from Mortal Kombat 1. Now Mortal Kombat 1 on the Game Boy, there's no denying it, it was a struggle. It does not move fast. It is not a quick game. Uh, but do you know what? You, say, I, you know, I can't really complain. I liked the Mega Drive version, but even on this version, they put the bloody names in the energy bar the way they're supposed to. On the Mega Drive, apparently that wasn't important. Idiots. Now, before we talk about the bad, because it's going to be so easy to criticise this game, let's talk about what's good about the game. For a start, the character sprites are pretty faithful. They look pretty spot on. Look at Scorpion's uppercut there. That looks pretty standard. The, the movie's only made up of about seven frames, if that. But it still looks pretty good. Yes, the speed is pretty bad. The music isn't ideal. But it's still I think it's still a very faithful rendition. And if you were someone that couldn't possibly afford Mortal Kombat, let alone a, you know, a giant... Uh, um, 16-bit system to put it on at least you had an option to play the game and it was released at a reduced price for the Game Boy now the blood is missing now I'd love to blame uh, the Game Boy and its horrendous um, hardware inside for the lack of blood but chances are like the SNES version the reason there's no blood is because of Nintendo of America's you know pretty much worldwide um, reputation at that time for being real harsh on censorship in games. Anything to do with violence was frowned upon. So Mortal Kombat is nothing but violence. But apart from that, I would, oh, that throw animation was awful. So we've even got to finish him there. So the opportunity to do fatalities was there. They still even kept that in. They, put, they could have got away with a simple beat-em-up game. Now, it should also be mentioned there isn't a two-player mode in this. You can't just connect two Game Boys, uh, game boys and play up. It doesn't work. It just, it's not good enough. The, the background there, there's no Chang Tsung in the background, but we do have the monks of this background. And even Raiden, they could have so easily got rid of Raiden's teleporty stand-up, but they didn't. They kept that in, and I admire that, even if the throws are awful. So that's all the good. Um, the bad, I'm sorry to say, one the controls are just as delayed as they look. To pull off the moves, you have to perform them not only incredibly slow, but incredibly early. The moves themselves, it takes one or two seconds for an attack to respond after the button press. So the acknowledgement of the move took forever. On top of that, the frame rate and the gameplay made the game borderline impossible in anything other than a hit and hope context. The terrible hit detection, which we've seen, particularly those throws. The music, there's only about five tracks, and they're all pretty bad. Um, they probably would have been better to do completely original music rather than trying to rip off the existing music. Uh, the sound effects for hitting, get over here, all of the different moves from Liu Kang, none of that made it. Um, special moves, not only being impossible to pull off, but they actually removed a bunch of them. So I imagine a number of people have tried pulling off moves to the point of... Oh, this background looks awful. Everyone knows shadows and shades are something that are very hard to cre create on a Game Boy, and this game shows it in spades. Now, lastly, there was only six characters. Not only did you like all the other systems, you can't play as Shang Tsung or Goro, but for some bizarre reason, they removed Johnny Cage. I don't know why, but he's not on the lineup. But apart from that, it is a bloody good attempt. You've got to imagine playing this game on this tiny little handset. It did well to get do as well as it did, but it still is kind of a pimple on the on the bum of Mortal Kombat, to be honest. But of course, this was back in 1993, one year after Mortal Kombat 1's arcade release. What about Mortal Kombat 2? 
and on to Mortal Kombat 2. There's no denying it, Mortal Kombat 2 they took more seriously. People have spoken about the Mortal Kombat games on the Game Boy on several different platforms, but it was Mortal Kombat 2 that was the best overall. Yes, there's less characters. Look at it, there's no denying it. There's less characters than the original game, but it's got Shao Kahn. It's got a lot of the characters. They kept a lot of the original assets, it has to be said, from the original game. Those energy bars are exactly the same, but they didn't go to the trouble of just reusing a lot of the original sprites for Sub-Zero, Scorpion, they kept, they created the new ones as they did for Mortal Kombat 2. They've got those separate poses. Sub-Zero and Scorpion do not look exactly the same. Two, they improved the sound effects. As you can hear, those sound effects are a great deal better. The recognition of round endings, the backgrounds having several layers, all big, big improvements. And the fatalities, with including bones all over the shop. Although that sound effect there was awful that have included a good healthy mix of the old characters and the new. They've included a bunch of the new backgrounds, and the new backgrounds like having the spit, the pit in the ceiling there, you could perform the pit fatalities. There were so many ways in which they improved it, and all the skeptics, again myself included, that laughed at the time of a Game Boy Mortal Kombat game stopped in their tracks with Mortal Kombat 2. Because this version of Mortal Kombat 2 wasn't just good, I think it's better than the attempts of the NES and the Master System. Obviously it's not up there with the SNES and the Mega Drive, but for a tiny handheld system, this game was impressive. Are we gonna get a pit fatality? You see, even though there's no blood, you can blame Nintendo, maybe the hardware for that, but they still kept in the pit fatalities and this game wasn't just, it doesn't just look more playable, it is more playable. They solved a lot of the hit detection problems, they solved a lot of the um, moves being pulled off, so now moves were pulled off considerably more fluidly. The speed of the game was vastly improved. You must have noticed this game is playing considerably faster. Even the throws um, were improved. Mortal Kombat 2 was the, the gem of Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy. It was just a better game overall. And this time around it was released part and parcel with other platforms with Mortal Kombat 2. They weren't left in the gutter six to 12 months later. Now, the characters do move stiff. We've been talking good all along, it can't always be good. The characters do not move in the same way the characters move in Mortal Kombat on other platforms. A whole different engine of movement between characters and the way they move was invented. They move a little bit more like Street Fighter in the speed at which they move, particularly the jumps as well. The jumps aren't fully controlled. But the game itself still plays remarkably well. And look, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and they've got their different attributes. We've got Mr. Toasty. Um, Noob Cybot is in this game as well, Boom Tobias. Um, but it should be said there aren't many backgrounds. There's only six backgrounds in the game, and one of them is a secret. Also, the music itself, more tracks than last time, but still only eight, eight tracks overall. Um, now, replayability, it's easily the most replayable Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy. It was just, it's just a fun game to play, and it looks better. And the fatalities, the way they got around a lot of the gore was to create more animated fatalities. So the fatalities themselves look more hand-drawn, and that comes across very, very well. Now, apart from that, the sound is bad. Let's be honest, the sound is terrible. It's, you know, it's not a patch on the other ones. It is better than uh, Mortal Kombat 1 on the Game Boy, but it's still pretty bloody awful. That said, although they try to cover up a lot of its shortcomings, as you can hear, with lots of crash and boom and smash and this, that and the other, they don't do a good enough job sort of plastering over those cracks. And it still comes across as a little bit poor in the sound department. But once again, what the hell do you expect? This is the Game Boy. No, for me, Mortal Kombat 2 was the gem in the crown of Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy, and I know I'm not alone in saying that. But what about Mortal Kombat 3? And on to Mortal Kombat 3. Now, what on earth were they thinking? They, they like Icarus, they flew too close to the sun. This game looks the best in every single regard except playability. It's got everything, multiple towers, multiple fatalities, the title screen, the boxes, everything, even the, the pictures of the characters there. They look so arcade faithful to Mortal Kombat 3. They've got the versus screens, they've even got the little six um, port, port code to put in. This game really, you see what I mean? They really committed 
but then once you play it, it looks and plays awful. It is just the worst. It is one, insanely hard. The hit detection is dreadful. Somehow, the moves are now slower to pull off. They've actually taken a step back from Mortal Kombat 2, which was so playable. This game, they've kept the energy bars, they've improved the music, should be said, still exactly the same number of tracks and backgrounds as Mortal Kombat 2 on the Game Boy, but with a one exception, we'll talk about later on. But for the most part, like the name, Zero, rather than Sub-Zero, just Zero. Everyone's names have been abbreviated for the energy bars. Um, and the characters themselves, we've, they've included the run facility, it heads to that little bar underneath the energy bar. But it still just looks to the characters are far, far too grainy. They've gone with that sound effect thing they did last time, trying to hide a lot of the shortcomings um, with extra sound effects, but they just come across now as littered. The audio is just too littered now. Um, on top of that, once you complete each round, the delay between rounds is painful compared to the other two. You could get a good four or five rounds in very, uh, four or five matches in very quickly on the other one. But on this game, everything just felt, look at, listen to that noise, the fi finish him noise. And that fatality was poor. We didn't see anything. What we saw was a man being frozen, not a fatality. But the delay is just enormous. You can't skip or speed any of this up. So the end of each round to the start of the next one takes about 30 to 35 seconds. And if you're using a battery powered device, look how awful those main characters blend into that background. Now, remember, we are watching this. You know, you're watching it on YouTube, presumably on a lovely high lit, maybe LED screen. If you're not playing on a tiny little greeny black screen on a Game Boy when daylight can screw things up. The music, oh, how awful that music is. No. Oh. See what I mean? It's, it's sharp, it's tangy, no, it's horrible. They tried so well. The presentation of this game is by far one of the best. But it, the playability, for some reason, they took all the good points of Mortal Kombat 2 and said, Oh, we have spoiled you, and pulled the bunch back. So... Straight away, aside from the hideous um, graphics and tone there, it makes everything look grainy, not just in gameplay, but in the character select screen, on those towels, all the things they've tried to really boast and show off. They've ruined it with this awful attempt on this... Oh, that noise. That was a fatality you just saw there. Oh, it was a babality, sorry. So... Again, they had those extra bay balance, but they just look awful, though. Um, on top of that, the slowdown. Apparently, the game, the game Boy would get very, very hot during play. And the slowdowns that you see, like right now, the massive delay between rounds was made all the worse with the big delays. So there you go, entering in the code there. Um, the awful music, terrible sound effects, and the smaller roster. Remember, the original arcade had 15 characters. This has nine, and two of those don't even work. Um, the AI was too horrible with awful hit detection, meaning that when you could, you know, play well and you weren't being gypped by the AI, then, you know, you, you couldn't rely on all of your hits hitting, particularly the uppercut. A lot of people do highlight that. The uppercut, half the time, never even connect. And if there's a move that leaves you so utterly open to counter-attack, it is the Mortal Kombat uppercut. But look at that change of level design every now and then. As much as I hate this game, it brings something back. It kept the multiple background, the fatalities, the bay it, It's such a shame. It's such a beautifully presented game. But it's a shame that the game is poor. Now, once again, doing fatalities is all the harder as well. <coughs> Due to the two-button interface, more combat on the Game Boy has always been a bit of a limited enterprise. But they changed the way a lot of the fatalities had to be performed. Um, that's a tremendous speed differences there, you probably saw that between the characters too, but ultimately the game itself is um, it's all gl glimmer and sod all substance because the game itself, once you play it, is just poor. <coughs> but finally, let's go to the last big bastion of Mortal Kombat on the Game Gear. Let's look at Mortal Kombat 4 for the Game Boy Color.
Which brings us neatly to Mortal Kombat 4. Now, Mortal Kombat 4 should have been the peak. It was a great game, Mortal Kombat 4, and it didn't do so well on a number of platforms. But, Mortal Kombat 4 and the Game Boy Color, I would say is one of the worst Mortal Kombat of all. They didn't go out with a bang, they went out with a whimper. And it has to be said that this is one of the worst Mortal Kombat games I've ever played. Which is a harsh way to put it. First and foremost, it is obviously just that Mortal Kombat 3 game we just saw that's been reskinned. Look how awful the characters look. They are terrible. The game suffered enormous slowdown from doing the very simplest movements. The music was insanely repetitive. They cut it down to five tracks of music. The backgrounds limited to six, I believe, with one secret background. The game itself was painfully poor. The colour scheme was dreadful. They took the, the Game Boy Colour that introduced the ability to have coloured graphics on a game and they took it with this game and made and actually made you hate looking at colour. It made Mortal Kombat look like it was from 1986. It looked terrible. The moves were hard to pull off. They were slow. The jumping, if you didn't jump and press attack at the right time, you wouldn't be able to attack. The fatalities were borderline non-existent. Hopefully we'll see some of those in a bit. The characters in a number of places are just reskin replicas of older ones. In the game's original files, you can find, and not me, but other people have dug into the original ROM and found still files of audio and graphic from Mortal Kombat 3. It really is literally just a rehash of the other game. Shao Kahn's announcement, announcement is in the game files. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So here we go, are we gonna see a fatality? Yes. Instead of fatalities, what we see are cinematic FMVs. We don't even get to feel like we've performed the move. All we're doing is actioning a mini poor FPS um, FMV there at the end. And look, the same background with different music. Listen to that music and tell me that this music is from the late 90s. What is that about? That is awful. And I'm aware the Game Boy is an old system and I'm aware I'm having a go at an old system with it where it can't defend itself so far into the future. And, it does, and you might think it did well to have Mortal Kombat 4 so late into the game of the console's life cycle. But what I would say is you are not looking at Mortal Kombat 4. You are looking at Mortal Kombat 4's sick, flu-ridden grandfather. You are looking at Mortal Kombat 4 for people that have never played Mortal Kombat. Um, now, again, I can't just continue having a go at the game, but I've got to talk about some of its good points, because it's not all bad. Well, it's pretty much all bad, but one, the character rendition. They kept a lot of the new characters in from Mortal Kombat 4. They managed to get a bunch of them in, as well as getting some bosses in as well. They managed to have a good menu structure and a practice system. But that said, I find it very hard to give any compliment to this game, because in my previous talk about Mortal Kombat 3 there, I said one of its biggest failings, oh there we are, FMV, doesn't feel in any way connected. Um, when it came down to Mortal Kombat 3, I was angry that they took a lot of the good points of Mortal Kombat 2 and cut them out and binned them. This game doesn't just do that, it took away all the goodness and replaced it with just a non-game. It just, it doesn't, you can't even blame Mortal, you can't blame the Game Boy, you've got to blame the people that designed it. This wasn't designed by Probe, uh, like all the other versions um, and the other companies. This was made by Digital Eclipse, who progressively made each game worse, unfortunately. Now, for a start, the terrible graphics were actually recognised as causing a great deal of eye strain amongst a lot of uh, players. On top of that, the game also had terrible choices of colour for the Game Boy Colour. You think when you've got that spectrum to play with, how much bloody blue is there on that background? That is not clear. Um, on top of that, the soundtrack is painfully repetitive, limited, and awfully composed. The whole game feels like it was knocked together in about a month. Um, the fatalities, non-existent, of course, FMVs. The voice samples are digitized and hard to hear and don't sound like them. They've even removed a lot of the angry sound effects too. Oh look, there's that fatality again. I'm actually bored. Uh, fatalities. Um, no characters have an ending. All endings are just a paragraph of text and boom, that's it. 
the frequent slowdown doing if two characters do a, super, a special move at the same time the whole game borderline crashes um, the opponent's AI is painfully easy and does almost no damage hence the game uh, completing the game is really really quick and it doesn't feel in any way fulfilling without that ending screen a lot of the characters have their names spelt wrong Liu Kang's name is spelt without a space Scorpion is not called a Scorpio there's so much wrong with this game and all it does is to serve that there was a reason Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy died. I wouldn't say it was to do with the technology. I will not say it's because of the Game Boy not being hardcore enough. I won't say it's because Mortal Kombat as a game, as a sub-genre, was outgrowing. I will say it was because of sloppy, poor conversions like this that made people lose interest. Because Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 held it together with some dignity. But 3 let it go and 4 was on the corner of the street doing tricks. But otherwise, this has been a history of Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy, shh, Game Boy Color. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, if you've got a recommendation for a future video, and if you, like me, are sick of that fatality, pop it down there in the comments. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.